Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have the same O2ZR 600 EFI. We're still working on this thing. We're bound to get this thing going. So the next thing that we are going to do is we're gonna go ahead and swap stators out because what I found is I tested the stator completely and the only thing that I was getting as a variance, which is a pretty huge variance, is the charge coils. There are two charge coils on this sled and they both should register at 16 ohms a piece, 16 and a half, 17 ohms a piece. And when you uh, check them together, they're supposed to be right around 32 to 34 ohms. Well, I was only getting an eight on each of them and 16 between the two. Everything else checked out good. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go ahead and pull a stator that we've already tested off of a donor engine. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull the stator that's on this sled off and then put the other stator on. Go ahead, button it all up, and then we're gonna fire it up. So that's what we're gonna to do today. So hope you'll stick around for the process. All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of what tools we're gonna to be using today. Just gonna to be using a pry bar. This is to hold the pulley on the flywheel still while we go ahead and crank on the flywheel and crank. Um, we have a, this is pretty much just a, a standard puller set. This is a bolt type wheel puller set. So um, it's got just a whole plethora of stuff in here to use. I found these to be uh, perfect for, for pulling flywheels off. And, um, it just comes with everything you need. I've added a few of my cho of my own choice pieces to help with, you know, lining everything up, making sure everything's good to go. Um, you know, a couple of thick washers we're probably going to end up using. Um, these are these nuts here. I use for these long. These are all twelve point nine metric, and they're they're uh, six millimeter by one threading and. I just use these as a kind of like a thick spacer washer and it really helps to focus the um, the pressure evenly on the polar bracket itself. And then, like I said, I got some washers here. I, I use thick washers that helps to, you know, make sure everything's nice and solid when we go ahead and start cranking on the, the flywheel there. So we got that. Uh, we got a three quarter inch socket. And that's going to be for the flywheel bolt. We got a 10 millimeter socket. That's going to be for the flywheel pulley, the three flywheel pulley nuts, or I'm sorry, bolts. And then the ground wire to the engine from the stator bolt. And then we also have a 9 16 on a half inch ratchet here. That is to crank the puller shaft right in the middle. So, and then obviously into a 3 8 And then I have a set of socket head bits here uh, should be just i think it's a five millimeter it's either a four millimeter or a five millimeter to get the stator off itself so just wanted to give you a quick rundown of the simple little toolkit that we need to go ahead and pull this apart obviously there's going to be a couple other bolts that we're going to have to pull we're going to have to pull the recoil off that's usually either a 10 millimeter bolt or socket head depending on which sled, depending on who's done what to it, blah, blah, blah. So we'll go ahead and get set up over at the sled and we'll start getting this thing torn apart. But first I'll show you the engine that we have as a donor to pull the stator off of. And the last couple of important tools that you might need are a set of nippers, wire snips, whatever you want to call them. And of course the magnetic bowl to hold all your bolts. So we'll go ahead and set this stuff off to the side and go ahead and take you over to the donor engine. All right, so this is the donor engine, guys. As you can see, this thing is nasty. It's beat up. It's just abused in general. Um, the good thing is, is that I got the complete engine, which, you know, obviously isn't a whole lot to brag about. I got the whole engine minus the reeds, uh, both cylinders, the head, the motor mounts, um... I didn't get the recoil, but everything you see here, plus all the stuff I just mentioned, for $75. So, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, that's a pretty good deal. I even got an extra spark trigger coil out of it that is good. I tested that as well. Uh, the only thing that it is missing is the plug here. The Molex plug is what it is. It's the plastic thing that goes over it, but not a big deal. I know what order these go in. And um, I'll be able to go ahead and take the other Molex plug off of the stator that's on the sled, which, by the way, is an aftermarket. So this should be a testament to how 
crappy aftermarket uh, staters are. So don't waste your time. Get an OEM. If you can find a used one, good. If not, then get one rewound by a professional. So what we're going to do here is, like I said, we're just going to go ahead and start uh, pulling this stator off. First thing we need to do is put a pry bar through this pulley, and then we're, that'll allow us to break loose these three here and the main nut for the flywheel itself. All right, so the first, the first thing that we're going to do here is go ahead and break these bolts loose. Probably don't even need to use a pry bar. Uh, you just want to make sure that they're loose enough to where you're not going to have any problems getting them broke free. I mean, they're only put on there by like seven pounds anyway, so. Okay, so now that we got those broke loose, we're going to go ahead and put the pry bar in. And you want to put the pry bar in in a manner to where you're going to have enough clearance for your socket that you're going to break loose. You're going to break the flywheel nut loose. So now we got the flywheel nut loose. You want to crank it out a little bit, just enough to where when the flywheel does pop loose, I mean, it's only going to move like eighth of an inch at the most. Okay, so now that we got that broke loose, we can go ahead and remove the flywheel pulley, the starter pulley. Put those in our trusty magnetic bowl. Okay, so on our puller, I typically will put the flattest side towards the flywheel. And then I will use the conical shaped head for it. And then that will fit right in the end of the, fly, of the crank, actually. Just like that. You don't want to use the flat one because it'll ride on this nut here and yeah. All right, so we'll go ahead and get our three metric bolts set up going here. And like I said, I'll just pop these through a 5 16 inch lock nut and then I'll put a washer over that and then a spacer just because these are long. And you only want to thread these in about a maybe half an inch. And yes, they do get tweaked a little bit over time. You don't want to thread these bolts in too far because you can uh, get a little bit too close to the stator. All right, it seems like we're Good there as far as clearance. Now what you want to do is you want to look down from the top and you want to make sure that the back surface of this is parallel with the flywheel and that way you get even pressure all the way around. So if you don't have even pressure, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to pull this flywheel off. And the best way to make sure you got even pressure is just to go ahead and uh, spin the flywheel. You might have to tweak it a couple times. And just to make sure everything's snugged up. Go ahead and tighten up those bolts a little. All right, we're looking good. We're just about there. All the way around. All right, we're good to go. So before you get started with this pressure here, I want to stress that it's important to make sure that you have proper eye protection on. You want to get some goggles. 
put those on. We're going to go ahead and scoot our engine over so we can get proper leverage. And then we're going to go ahead and take our tool here, the pry bar. Because we're going to be spinning this to the right to get the proper pressure. So you want to make sure that when you're spinning this to the right, the flywheel's not going to move on you. All right, let's go ahead and give it a crank. I'm gonna, I went ahead and put some gloves on just to make sure that if this does pop off, something does break, then my hands are gonna be protected. Sometimes they are pretty hard. Uh, you gotta crank on them real good for it to pop off, but usually they do. There you go. And yeah, that was a pretty, I had to crank that pretty good. All you do is just go ahead and back these off. Okay, so what I will typically do is put the pulley back on, the starter pulley. And what that does is that just makes the flywheel a little bit easier to grab. So we got the flywheel nut. The lock washer. I oh, can't really get in there. Should just be able to pop it right off after that. There we go. All right, the next step is loosening these three bolts right here to hold the actual stator onto the stator plate. You might want to go ahead and push the grommet through that holds the that seals off the wires to the flywheel housing there for the stator. Being careful not to damage the stator, of course. Alright, so there's your spacer. It's got lips on either side, so it stays in there. Um, that makes it a just a hair difficult to get out. Alright, let's go ahead and break these three bolts loose that are holding in the stator. These do get red Loctite upon reassembly. And then the last thing you want to undo is the clip that holds the wire against the back of the housing there. So keep those together in your magnetic bowl. You should be able to pull the stator right out. Once again, you want to make sure that before you pull it out that you have this grounding cable disconnected and that's a 10 millimeter bolt as well. All right, so there we go. It's got a little bit of rust on the ends here. Should just be able to hit that with a little bit of sandpaper. Maybe put a little coating of grease on top. Just enough to, you know, help it to not rust. You can just leave it like that if you want. 
All right, so now that we got this off, we're gonna go ahead and go over to the sled and start to pull it apart to get its stator off. Once again, we just have the two springs and the one bolt for the muffler. The muffler slips right out. It's always a good idea to make sure you keep your fasteners bolted together. Nuts and bolts and washers. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do here is go and unplug the stator. Get the fuel pump, the injector coil, the ignition trigger coils. That's the Molex I'm gonna use. I'm sorry, these, yeah, these are ignition coils one and two. And then this right here is the spark trigger coil and the lighting coil is your yellow one with the brown and of course we have the ground cable we'll make sure to be careful you don't drop either of those get your nippers if you if you need them cut that zip tie loose your wire snips Set your little mount off to the side. Okay, so now that we have the stator wires disconnected, which I guess we didn't really even have to disconnect the spark trigger coil, because that's its own separate entity. We'll go ahead and take the recoil housing off. Set your engine to frame grounding cable aside. There's four of these anchoring bolts all together. And then you can pull your recoil housing off. Usually just stretch it out and hang it over the back side of the belly pan right by the pole starter so just like before you want to get your pry bar and your three quarter inch socket and go ahead and break that flywheel bolt loose next you want to get that recoil pulley off of there Set your recoil pulley out of the way. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and get the, the flywheel puller installed onto the flywheel and go ahead and pop that flywheel off.
That's how easily they come off when they're fresh and clean. All right, you can go ahead and put your pulley back on. Like I said before, this will aid in taking the flywheel on and off, especially putting it back on. It doesn't have to be on there tight. It can just be finger tight. Just so you get something to grab on to. Go ahead and slide your flywheel off carefully. Don't forget your washer. You can just go ahead and leave that the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and push our grommet out again. Set that off to the side. Once again, get your harness retainer clip. Oh, that's right. This one didn't even have one on there. One of the other things that didn't come on this sled. I totally forgot. Well, I got one now, so that's good. Let's go ahead and break these three stator bolts loose. All right, now you want to go ahead and pull the stator out. All right, there's the old stator. There's a couple ways that you can tell the difference between staters. So you see the color of the windings, and I believe it's the actual coating on the copper um, that gives it a darker, more of a red appearance than the orange. Well, the orange is the OEM, and then you'll also be able to look at the two charge coils, three-prong Molex plug. It's not going to be white like this one has. This will be used for this though. So, <laughs> hey, don't get that mixed up. But another way is uh, the wiring. You're supposed to have a black and red wire, a green and red wire, and then a brown and white wire, I believe is what it is. Yeah, brown with white stripe. So although these are similar, they're not the same. They have that like cloth, braided shield over them but everything else on this looks the same except for this plug here it's white on the oem and black on this aftermarket so that's one thing that i didn't catch when i was reassembling this i it totally didn't i didn't even think about it it didn't cross my mind so stupid me lesson learned like i said Failure is not a failure if a lesson from it's learned. So that's a really important lesson as always. Recognizing where you went wrong and preventing it next time. All right, so now that we got both stators out, we're going to pop out these old wires from this clip, this Molex plug, and then we're going to go ahead and slip these new wires in it. If you're unsure of the orientation, just go ahead and do them one at a time. You should be able to stick. There's a little tab that sticks in there like this that catches on a wall. So all you got to do is just take the screwdriver and uh, push it down. And then the, the uh, terminal itself should slide right out. You might have to push it in first. Stay in there. Okay. So there's actually a tab that goes into this hole right here. So you want to stick it in between the top of this and that plastic tab and then just lift up. If you stick it in there far enough, it'll lift it up to where this will pull right out. Okay, so we got the black wire. We're going to put that one in there first. You'll hear it click when it pops back in. Same thing for the green and red. And the last one. All 
Here we go. All right, so you want to go ahead and make sure that all three terminals are in there securely. I did hear all three of them click, so we should be good to go. All right, and then the last step, you want to inspect the plugs and make sure they're all clean, especially this lighting plug here. If they're not, I'm going to go ahead and pull out another piece of, or the same piece of sandpaper that I showed you before. Just roll a nail up in it so it's firm. And just go ahead and twist it with the grain inside there. You can untwist it a little just to expand it. Give it some good spins. Pretty close. A lot of the times your electrical issues boil down to corrosion inside of loose plugs. And you can see all the crud that it's gotten off. So I think we're pretty good there. All right, we're looking good. We'll go ahead and clean this up. Rest of these look pretty good. Even this ground plug or this ground loop here looks real good. A lot of the times these will uh, break off inside the heat shrink and you'll be able to just pull them off. You'll be, you know, won't have any spark and you'll wonder what the heck's going on. Well, you give this a little tug and it'll pop right off. So you'll, what you'll want to do is to test is pull this yellow lighting coil plug here and then uh, you want, you'll want to test from here to this with a multimeter. And you just want to test for connection so you can put it on ohms and uh, make sure you got connection there. Um, if, it's, if there's no connection, obviously it's going to be an open reading. But if there is, it'll just show, you know, zeros or 0 0.001 or whatever it's going to be. So, all right, that's it. Let's go ahead and I've already cleaned this thing up a little bit. Go ahead and blow this off with some compressed air. Okay, so now we're back over at the snowmobile here. You want to stick these wires in first. The longer ones, obviously. There's a couple ways you can do it. Bunch them up. All right, so we got the wires through. And what I like to do is go ahead and put the, uh, you wanna put some Loctite on these. Do blue Loctite, red, you sometimes can risk the chance of, you know, um, breaking these smaller bolts when you try and take it off after a while. So blue is good enough. We got our three stator retaining bolts. Let's do uh, six and a half foot pounds on these. Gonna go ahead and put on our stator wire retainer. It does have a lock washer on it, but you can go ahead and, as the saying goes, a little dabble do ya. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole situation.
All right, now you wanna grab your flywheel. Make sure you got your key lined up. I like to make it to where my key is at the top. So what you can do is just go ahead and open your belt cover. And spin your, your clutch until your key is at the top. I'll grind it back in. So when you put your grommet back in, you want to make sure that both of those lips, both of those lips pop out to where they're on either side of the hole. We're going to go ahead and line up our flywheel here. good put our washer on and our lock washer now we're going to use some red loctite don't need a whole lot and we'll go ahead and put our nut on and at this point you can put your put your pry bar back through there make sure you got enough room for your socket And this bolt gets torqued. I'm sorry, this rat this this nut rather gets torqued to 55 pounds. Just so you guys know, it's not advisable to use an impact on any of this crank related stuff, especially the having to do with the flywheel. That's just a small one, it only does maybe 10, 12, 13 pounds at the most of torque. But still, it's, it's majorly the vibration that you don't want to worry about. Some people are say it's fine, but, you know, here at my channel and in my garage, I'm all about best practices. So what would be a best practice is not to use an impact gun. All right, so we got those in. And then what we'll do is get these flywheel bolts and put some red Loctite on them. can go ahead and check these if you'd like. Like I said, these are seven foot pounds as well. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and plug in the stator as well as reattach our grounding wire. All right, now as I've added before, this is bulb grease, it's dielectric grease. This is not conductive grease. This is an insulating grease. So you do not want to put this on contacts. Sure, some people have gotten away with it, but it's not a good practice. So, like I showed you before, what I do is I just smear a little bit on the edge of the, seal, of the mating surfaces of these plugs. And you don't even need much. So all along this rubber surface, all the way around, and then you just smear it in around it. And then what that does is it fills any cracks around in between the, the mating surfaces of the rubber. That way it seals out water, prevents corrosion. It's not conductive grease. So that's one. We'll put it on this other plug as well. 
once again, you just want to smear it. See if we can get you a little bit fire here. Okay, so this plug here, you just want to smear it on this little edge. Like I said, it doesn't take much. Not a lot. And when you go ahead and push them together, just smear right on the edge. You don't have to wipe it off, just leave it. Plug in your ignition charge coils, your ignition timing sensor coil. All right, now we are on to recoil, starter recoil housing. Once again, like I, what I like to do is get these holes with a little bit of this blue Loctite before I even put the housing on there. You guys don't have to do this. I just stick a little straw in there and spin it around. Helps to get it on all the threads, but then also helps to spread it out to where it doesn't ooze out when I go to put the bolts in. Okay, so let's get our recoil in position. Got our four bolts. This top right one, we want to get our grounding wire on. I like to get a short well socket. Get a gauge of where my hole is. There it is. That's all you want to do. Right, so let's go ahead and get our muffler on here. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get our muffler back on. Go ahead and get our expansion plate. 
Don't forget to make sure that your donut's lined up. Alright guys, that said, I hope you found this video useful. Like I said, you know, there's not a whole lot to it. It's pretty simple tools. You know, as long as you understand what's going on, it's a pretty simple job. Just takes a little bit of time. So, thanks a lot for coming on back. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Hit the alert bell so you're notified of future updates and videos I got going on. Share the video on social networking with friends and family that you think might like this kind of stuff. And go ahead and make sure you smash that like button if you like this video. So thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Come on back. Take care. God bless.